Hello guys welcome to MJ School of Mining and Geology YouTube channel. Please like, subscribe, share, comment and hit the ring to keep up with our content. Today we are discussing the role of plate tectonics in shaping the famous Karoo sedimentation. The Karoo supergroup, deposited in a subsiding retroarc foreland basin environment, records a largely unbroken stratigraphic succession from the Carboniferous to the Mid-Jurassic. This supergroup is internationally renowned for its wealth of fossil tetrapods and large coal seams. More recently it was suggested that the initial Karoo Basin formed as a result of block subsidence along major marginal faults. Karoo supergroup is divided into four groups which are Dwyka, Eka, Beaufort and Stormberg, respectively. These groups they represent the change in Karoo Paleo environment from glaciation during Dwyka times all the way to the desert conditions in the upper Karoo called Stormberg. Plate tectonics involves the movement of the lithospheric plates because of convectional cells. In the Karoo sedimentation, plate tectonics played a major role in shaping the sedimentation. The tectonic regime during Karoo times was defined by compression and accretion along the southern margin of Gondwana coeval with extension propagating into the supercontinent from its Tethian margin. The tectonic regimes during the Karoo time varied from dominantly flexural in the south, in relation to processes of subduction, accretion and mountain building along the Paleo-Pacific margin of Gondwana. It then shifts to extensional to the north, in relation to spreading processes along the Tethian margin of Gondwana. Due to plate tectonics or tectonic deformation, faulting and folding, the basement rocks had planes of weaknesses or fractures. But because of the effect of convection cells, the crust thins out due to extension creating an inland sea termed Agulha Sea which was filled by waters from the rivers which were flowing towards the sea. The first sediments which were deposited within an inland sea formed Cape Supergroup sediments. This was during Dwyka times, wherein the Gondwana was at the South Pole experiencing glaciation because South Pole is characterized by extreme coldness. Due to the movement of plates, the Gondwana was drifting towards the north, resulting in the melt of the ice. The water therefore filled and enlarged the Karoo Sea which was formed as the other part of the crust together with the Cape Supergroup rocks were being pushed towards each other, colliding head-on with the oceanic crust. During that process, the oceanic crust gets to be subducted creating the volcanoes which served as the source of the sediments within the retro-arc foreland basin named Karoo Sea. On the other hand, the crust being folded and being pushed upward due to extensive amount of pressure forming fold mountains which also provided the major source of sediments during the Eka times. At the end of the Eka times, the Cape Mountains in the south continued to rise, providing a major source of sediment for the Karoo Sea. The highlands to the north became more eroded and eventually became covered with sediment as the Karoo Sea silted up, resulting in the Karoo Sea to eventually shrink to a lake, marking the boundary with the Beaufort Group. Moving on, the Karoo was moving closer to the North Pole and the vegetation which was lost during Permian mass extinction was recovered and that was towards the end of Beaufort times. The Karoo almost or closer to the north, with extremely hot conditions reflected by an increasing aridity from Elliot to Clarence during Stormberg times Elliot, Maltino, Clarence. During the mid-Jurassic times, the sedimentation was halted by Drakensberg volcanics and breakup of Gondwana. This caused the Karoo dinosaurs in South Africa to perish. But the dinosaur continued to exist elsewhere until the end of Cretaceous period. The Karoo is the most widespread stratigraphic unit in Africa south of the Kalahari Desert. The supergroup consists of a sequence of units, mostly of non-marine origin, deposited between the late Carboniferous and early Jurassic. Thanks for watching.